Welcome to this horror special of TRS Clips. Make sure you subscribe because the scares have just begun. So one such case we got in Odisha, Bhubaneswar. So this uh, was a case uh, coming from an from a you know an old lady who must be in her sixties or seventies, and she was only accompanied by her grandchildren, no son, no daughter-in-law, no one, and she was you know. Panicking very badly. Why? Because she's like, um, sir. Uh, it started with sir. It later turned into beta. But uh, he, she was like, sir. Um, there's few things that are happening. So they were living the ground floor. Then there was uh, an upper floor, and the upper floor uh, is uh, has been lying abandoned for the last thirty years. By the time we were investigating this case, and she's like, you know, there's few things happening up there, and few things happening around the house as well. The reason I'm calling you is because uh, one of my grandchildren, he was seeing one of her videos. He got influenced by it, and he went up to the abandoned floor trying to copy what you are doing. So he took a camera, not a camera. He took some iPad or something, and he was recording it. And while you're recording, he started hearing some kind of uh, like a child's giggle or something like that, and he got scared. Of course, he knew that things are happening, and he was trying to come back. But when he was trying to come back, He felt like something is following him, and when he stopped and turned back to see what is following him, he saw this dark mass, some eight nine feet uh, tall, just looking at him, like 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 you know, caving him up. And uh, the next moment, he see he feels like it is pushing him, the grandchildren, and he falls. He falls down the stairs. He breaks his head, a head as in he injures himself, and breaks the iPad. And now the entire family is panicked because one of them. Has been injured. As of now, the only experiences they had was either you know either उधर ही कुछ आवाजें हो गईं and all those things were happening, but nothing like this. This is what we received on the call. You know, this is like the first step. The second step is to go and do the interview or a preliminary investigation, as we call it. And uh, interview is very important because that's what we get. What are we trying to investigate? Um. So when we met the lady, you know, she's very fragile and everything. And uh, she had grandchildren all from the age of let's say ten years old to some twenty in their twenties, you know, early twenties, and there were at least five or six of them. And uh, when we entered the house, there was this particular vibe, like we were talking about the vibe thing. And considering for how many years we have been doing this, uh, the moment we enter a place, we know the vibes. We know there's something wrong in this place or that place, and that's how that's how we start off. And we entered, and there was this feel. But considering where I come from, my background is science. So even though I'm feeling thousands of things out there, I cannot put them on the surface because that will manipulate my team's readings and the readings that I have on the devices. So I have to be very straight and kind of discard every other thoughts and emotions I'm going through. Irrespective, I sat down and we were talking, and uh, the lady starts. Story that things are happening, and meanwhile, before I go to the story, I notice that there are four photographs on the wall with garlands on them, and I just happen to ask, "Who are they?" And she says, uh, two of them are my son; the rest of them are their wives, daughter-in-law." And I'm like, "Oh, so the, all four of them passed away?" Um, she is like, "Yes." And then she goes on to add that I think it is a spirit that is haunting the house that killed them. And I'm like, "Why do you say that?" You know. So she said that all four of them died of, uh, um, died of a death that is quite unexplainable. They have no idea how they died. As in, they're all fine, and suddenly all four of them fell sick and died. That's it. But what was the sickness? They couldn't figure out. They were getting treated about it, and this, this is I'm talking 2016. You know, it's not like COVID or something like that. It's quite old, considering a bit 2023. Yeah. As in, they died in 2016, roughly. Ye, no, no, they died in the year 2015 or 14. We got to investigate in 2016, but the okay. activities have been happening way before that. Hmm. Um, and uh, I'm like, yeah, okay. So by then, I was with a TV crew, and the TV crew are like, you know, they're poor souls. They have no idea what we're dealing with, so they got like. What the hell is this? So I'm like, no, I'm, I'll, I'll figure out what she's trying to say. You don't worry about it. And I ask, you know, what are the things that are happening? And she says that, you know, every uh, night, almost every night, we see that there is this lady who is wearing a red sari. Um, is walk. So uh, if I go on to explain how the house was, it was in the colony, uh, and uh, the house uh, uh, is right in front of the main road that leads to other houses of the colony. 
So what she says is that she sees a lady, not just her, the neighbors see, even the person who is living three buildings down also sees a lady wearing a white sari, uh, sorry, red sari, you know, walking on the road, entering their building, going to the terrace and jumping off. Everyone would see that. And uh, there was, the, he, she, she went on to explain that there was a time when they went on to check if there's actually a body or something, but they found nothing. And this thing keeps on happening, you know, keeps on happening. Someone would come, the same lady, she would enter the house. Everyone would see her entering the house. Even the grandchildren would see an apparition entering the house, going to the terrace and jumping off. I'm like, okay, what else is happening? Then she goes on to explain. So things are about to get more weirder and, you know, as the conversation continues, she then goes on to say that uh, there are times when she, uh, the window of her house would get hit by stones and pebbles and like, you know, 10, 15 at a time. And everyone would, thought, uh, uh, would uh, think that, you know, some, some guy is throwing some, doing some mischief or criminal activity, whatever. And they would go on to check. No guy, but that's not the weird part. The weird part is there not be a single stone. But they would see the stone hitting the window. The window is cracked right now. But not a string, single stone out there. Second incident. Third incident. They say that when they go up, they feel this heaviness, which they cannot explain, even though the house has been lying abandoned. Of course, there are some things to consider if a house has been lying abandoned and there are dust and everything. Of course, the atmospheric pressure is very high because there's no flow of energy happening. But the lady is like, you know, okay, beta, I have been alive for the last 70 years. I have seen things, but I have not experienced the vibes that are happening up there. Then she goes on to say that the family that used to stay and uh, who left and after that it has been lying abandoned, they were having lunch. And uh, one fine day they just saw, not just experienced, saw that one of the plates was snatched by some unseen force. They just saw it flying. That very night they packed up, the next day they left the house and they never returned. The lady was still in touch with them, but they never returned. And then the lady was like, also, uh, beta, I am very concerned about my grandchildren. Uh, you can see they're, you know, they're very small and young. They have a life ahead. Of course, I can die. I do not have a problem in that. I have already lost my son, my daughter-in-law. I don't want to lose these kids. So you have to do something. And as paranormal investigators, our priorities are old people and cases which involve kids or infants or something like that because these spirits they're sensitive can... they're sensitive and then it's like you know it's like how do i say they do not have any other way to go around they have already figured out you know that Isn't the ghosts don't have no no no. the the client like the old lady here she has no other option she's very worried if okay. we do not help her there is no one to help her in a way okay you know so that's why we have to prioritize them that but why do you think the spirit didn't harm the grandmom and but harmed her children uh probably because uh, that's this is my view because the lady always maintained this thing after they left uh, the people who are living out there is no one is going to go up there it is this just just one this grand kid who was very curious he didn't say to anything to her and he just went and started recording and that is when things happened okay until then they were just experiencing things from a very third person point of view nothing happening with them they were just like chill out and like Okay, it's happening, you know. And do you think the uh, two sons who died and their wives would have gone up there at some point or something? I never asked them, but now that you're asking, it could be a chance. But there's also a chance that the lady, the old lady, with due respect, ha is, is so uh, done and frustrated with the activities happening, is now blaming their death uh, to the spirits. Because see, like I said from the very beginning, my job is to debunk things and considering we do not know their health histories, their mental histories or any kind of history, we do have no idea. And also we do not have any right to conclude that it is the spirits that is doing it, okay. you know. So I never went on to investigate or ask more about it to her considering it's still an open wound and we really didn't want to, you know, do more digging and hurt her more. So we are like, let's do one thing is focus on the present. Right now, your grandkids are the priority, are your concern. That's what we're going to deal with. Now I'm with my crew, like I said, and I went up. Pooja was not with me. She was in Bombay. 
and uh, we went up and as a part of our investigation no matter wherever we are going the first thing is a psychic reading after the prelim and that's the part of the you know initial investigation that we do the preliminary that we do the part is to check out the house uh, as in figure out if there is any broken wall there is broken ceiling broken floor or something like that so that when we enter at night uh, or when there is no enough light we should be aware that that place has a crack we shouldn't be moving with all the weights and everything so what i do is i go up with my crew and the crew is taking all the b rolls and shots for the episode that they're trying to create and i click a photograph and i send it to pooja and i'm like pooja i need readings right now because there are a lot of things that are happening and you know how it happens and this is the most fascinating part the psychics are not shared any information about the place they have no idea about the case i'm going to deal with they have no idea what the place is what is the case how many people involved what kind of building it is it's an apartment mansion bungalow whatever no idea they just shared a photograph you receive the photograph now give a reading because if i share the information like i said the human mind is so uh, i mean i can go on to say a lot of things about the human mind it can actually manipulate the psychic readings as well you know who knows that the psychic is psychic is just playing around the words we are giving them so none of the information are shared and pooja takes 5 10 minutes and she gives a call back and the first thing is sarba i think you should be um, you should be ready for what's coming in let's take it like a warning i'm like why you know and she goes on to say that she is feeling very choky and uh, she feels like there was a lady who was there who was uh, kind of abused um physically abused actually and uh, she was uh, the, the the she according to according to pooja there is a rope around her neck and she is being dragged using that rope and she is being dragged out of the house and is being dumped under a tree there should be a tree sir bajit and i'm like the client didn't mention of any tree she is like now nah, very sure there is a tree that is where everything is happening you have to be you have to check that out and you have to be ready for what's coming in because this spirit she is very agitated she is very angry she is very frustrated with what has happened to her and the amount of time she has spent stuck here you have to be ready so the first thing we have to do is because psyche is saying there has to be something you know there is another experience if you are fine i'll share after this uh, to confirm how the psychics and we all work so i go down to the client and i'm like is there a tree nearby and the lady goes on to say uh you know beta wahin se to sab shuru hota hai i'm like you didn't mention that my psychic is mentioning that she is like no no there is a tree there is a tree where we saw the lady come out that is the tree where it all begins and we go out of the house there's a huge tree just standing out there and uh, i send a photograph to pooja again asking is it the tree she is like yes this is where she is buried and uh, all of those bad things that she went through happened in that floor that we were there so please be ready to what's coming in and you know people do uh, uh, call me uh, psychopath for it because when i hear something like that from my psychic that you have to be ready for what's coming in i become like a small kid because i'm all excited i'm like let's see what's happening now because see at the end of the day we are researchers and investigators who are trying to gather evidence of the paranormal and if a situation like this is coming up where the spirit is actually trying to show itself just to harm me some way or the other and as a return we are capturing things not just from a content point of view but just for the sake of research imagine what all we can do also because i know that nothing can harm me considering what i do before going for an investigation which is meditation so i uh, you know so if, if you if you notice i don't know if you notice we have no tabij or anything like that you know that we wear with all due respect to tabij and everything of course we do not have because one thing that we have is the belief in ourselves and the faith in the positivity that whatever is out there call it god masters or whatever we are calling them goddess goddesses ascended masters they are all protecting us that's the belief we go through and that belief is very strong very strong that's how we deal with any negativity you know you know when i was starting this podcast i felt yeah some kind of female higher energy yeah Yeah, that's yeah. why I asked you if you pray my, to Mata. Yeah, my my parents do worship uh, Durga Ma. They are ardent followers and worshippers, and uh, yeah, yeah. There's a long history to that. It was and, almost as if she wished me luck. Okay, <laughs> so she's take care of my son. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so see this is the connect that we have is the is also the belief that i have to these masters you know and uh, that's why when we go to a location i know that i'm in control here and that's why i have survived for the last 10 years and i know i'm going to survive for rest of the years or she's in control here yes and she is controlling the negativity and the positivity and she knows that nothing negative should come to these people you know so i'm all excited pooja is like you know you have to be ready and everything i'm like yeah let's f- do it let's do it so uh, you know we were all set and the crew had to attend to some other cases uh, so we were like let's not wait for night night also there is a very common common misconception that uh, why do paranormal investigators always go out to investigate at night you know you'll see all those memes and all floating and there is no such reason out there the only reason we go out at night is because the environment is very peaceful the less people less vehicles less crowd less horns and pomp and everything that's why we go in otherwise we have investigated places at even 6 am in the morning just to check out to to debunk this thing that why only at night so it was around 6 pm 7 pm and uh, in in odisha or uh, in the eastern part the sun sets very fast as compared to here in mumbai so by 6 6:30 it's already dark and we were like you know take even the night vision cameras are on the devices are on i am all set let's go in and get this done so what we do is something that is called as paranormal lockdown which is a very serious and dangerous thing but um, i'm sure no one in india does that apart from uh, me and my team and where what we do is we kind of basically lock ourselves in in the house and the lock and the key is uh, the lock is there the key is with some crew member who is sitting outside they are not with us so we are all stuck whatever is happening happening we have to deal with so that's what we do we also did the same with this case we asked one of the crew guys please do lock us and go and sit in the car and let us do our job and uh, we already have the psychic readings we already have everything ready and uh, to go on to explain how the room is so that you can also understand because uh, there will be certain things that i'll be explaining so the moment you enter from the main door there is a hallway to your extreme right is the washroom on your extreme uh, right uh, right top corner will be the kitchen beside the kitchen will be one of the bedrooms and again beside the room will be another bedroom so two bedrooms one hall kitchen and bathroom that was the structure and we enter and it's all abandoned of course we saw and everything and uh, when we enter so of course the, the, there's no light there's no electricity by default so we were like okay we will be using the night vision cameras and the torches that we have and while we are entering we just mark that there is a stone on one of the slabs that is out there there is a huge stone must be around a ton or something like that that's just kept there probably because it has fallen from somewhere so the people the people who are living down there because they also have to take care of the the upper floor probably they have called someone to pick that up or something like that we assumed it and we were like okay it's out there and it's safely kept you know nothing like that cut to we are just walking and uh, we reach the first bedroom and i just turn we see this teddy bear lying and i call that the animal of india you know and you'll see why the animal of india we enter and i find this doll lying around and i'm with my device a device that measures emf electromagnetic field and we are trying to figure out if there is any base reading so generally the emf has five lights the one of the devices that we use and generally the first light is always on because that's like giving us a base reading but there are certain places certain houses certain properties where the base reading goes on to two or three now how do we know it's not paranormal but uh, something very scientific is the lights will not fluctuate they will be like that because the flow of electricity is same no it's not changing mm. so three lights or two lights the base reading will be there but in this case we already only had one light so we are like okay there is no manipulation of any kind of electricity happening and we move on move on move on and uh, i'm like you know let's start this communication so what we do is basically we try to establish a communication with whatever the entity is whoever the entity is because that's like the first stage of understanding them talking i have to ask them who are you why are you here how long have you be- have you been um, did you die of this did you die of that Uh, are you male female whatever the questions are so i But just asked. did you all dig up the body at this point no no, no. this is uh, pooja said that this case happened at least 80 60 60 to 80 years back and uh, from back then only things have been happening so of course we never tried of course no one is going to believe us apart from the client that has called us yeah okay um for all the obvious reasons we have uh, in the country but uh, 
we went on and we start up with a very basic question is there anyone with us who would like to communicate with us because uh, we have been getting complaints that you are disturbing the peace of uh, those who are living uh, in the another ground floor and that you have also hurt one of their grandchildren is that true first 5 10 minutes usually nothing happens you know it's like and that's why it's a very, it's a job that requires utmost patience you have to sit for like 4 5 hours just to get one reply or two reply that's how it works why do you think that is because the entities uh, for example you know just before we started the podcast you needed some energy so you had something right same way for the spirits as well they need energy to manifest they cannot be just like at a point and do something like that uh, also there is a lot of research to it we have figured out that uh, the emf hotspots or the uh, how do i say the emf especially in southern asia or uh, especially this belt is very low as compared to that in the europe and in the usa that's why the activities that happen in usa or europe is very very severe and aggressive as compared to those which happen in india because they get a lot of energy and emf is that energy so you mean ghosts feed off of spirits or demons feed off EMF. Yeah, EMF But is one of those things. There's more. There's more. They also can feed off the EMF that we are radiating. We have an aura. Aura is nothing but our magnetic field, the body's magnetic field. So that's why we go to certain places and we start feeling drained suddenly. Because some energy, it can be a human being as well, what we call as energy vampires, mm. can be sucking out all the energies out of you. Mm. So you'll see that that person is very active but you are like dude, connection nahi ho raha hai. You know? that is uh, one of those sources another sources are batteries that we use in cameras that's why when we go on to investigation there will be five batteries which are supposed to run let's say each battery runs for 40 minutes for example and agar panch ho gaye to let's say you know 200 minutes they will go they will drain out in 60 minutes all of them so they take in the energy to manifest and if they do not get that energy they manifest in ways that is not complete uh, so let's say you know i this is a bit off topic but let's say spirit is trying to manifest but it is not getting enough energy so what happens is only uh, the head has manifested or only the hand has manifested so what we did um, in in india is that we took that concept and we added blood to it and humne usko ahat mein dikha diya we showed them in fear files that you know the entities which are moving without head without hands is basically entities which are not able to manifest themselves of course it's very horrifying when we see with blood and everything considering what we did back then but this is actually the real reason is that the entity is not able to manifest itself completely there it needs energy to manifest you're saying you can actually see something then without a head yeah you do you can actually but again in india it's super difficult considering we know geographically it's impossible that's why you we use certain energy uh, certain uh, devices to give them emf to help the spirits you know take it and manifest sometimes we also offer our phones you know drain the phones battery and manifest but isn't it dangerous to give them energy of course it is of course it is but let's say uh, when when it comes to a case like this where the old lady is looking for answer looking for a closure we have to put ourselves to that risk because we need answers you know okay. and uh, that's why it's important and that's why the job is what it is and maybe through that communication with the spirit you also calming it down and giving it closure in yes. order to leave yes that's the that's the final part of the investigation because at the end of the day we are trying to help the souls of both the worlds yeah the living and the dead of course because even though the entity right now the case i'm talking about is very frustrated and agitated but there's a reason behind it she is not agitated because she just wants to she has gone through something that gives her the right to be frustrated out there and of course she has been through such a terrible terrible act she has been killed so brutally no one deserves that and she is just trying to make others feel what she went through that's what spirits do so when you are at a place and you suddenly start feeling emotional like crying and all it could be just an entity trying to make you feel that you know i'm very sad so it's just reflecting and you are just absorbing it and you are doing it you know and a very common example i keep on giving so you know that's that, that's what i do mainly is i try to give real life examples to make people understand that it also happens to you it's just that you are not terming it as paranormal you know when we are with our best friends and all and the best friend is very happy we are automatically happy even though we do not have a reason as such personal reason the only reason is my best friend is happy 
But if the best friend is sad or depressed, you'll see automatically your energy is also going down. Your mood goes off. So you, we can just conclude that whatever energy they are radiating, we are also absorbing it. We are also getting affected by that energy. Same goes for the spirits. So when we are trying to communicate with them, the, at the end of the day, we are also trying to counsel them, trying to ease them. You know, we understand what you're going through and we are the only people who can understand. There will be no one else because the rest of them will be only getting scared. This is also one of our methods of bringing them or making them comfortable to talk to us. So even the spirits are also scared of human beings. You know, so you have to make them friendly. You know, you don't have to worry. So the way I investigate is very desi, if I say. I go on to talk in ways which I'll do with you or with one of my friends or something like that. You know, if if, if I may... Um, you know, अरे यार क्या यार इतना दूर से आए हम लोग अब बात नहीं करोगे तो क्या फायदा हुआ Friendly man हो Friendly man हो Because understand they have they are stuck there for seventy eight years they have to understand you are friendly and you are not some guy who is again trying to hurt them So for here also we did the same thing it was very calm and everything But you know as because we have been doing this for so many years now our senses are always in the in they are always active you know so we notice small things very minor things and there we are always noticing it can be that there is like you are playing with your fingers or that you know <laughs> something like that <laughs> okay go on <laughs> so we always notice things you know that and uh, it's like uh, mini sherlocks we are now. <laughs> mm. but uh, so i noticed that one of my crew guys he i just hope they are all fine outside <laughs> So one of my crew guys, uh, um, he was uh, coughing, you know, and initially I thought probably because there's a lot of dust out there and he's, you know, sensitive. That's why he's, uh, some people get infected very fast to dust and all. That's what he's doing. And he kept on ignoring, 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 ignoring. And I'm trying to establish a communication. There's no reply. There's no reply. And then I am coming to a point where the teddy bear was there and um, I sit down and I'm like, is this yours? Not asking the crew, I'm asking, talking to the spells directly. So it looks very funny that I'm just talking to a wall, but that's how it goes. So I'm like, is this yours? And the moment I asked this question, for the last 15 minutes, nothing was happening. And suddenly we get a reply on the device. The moment I ask, is this yours? There's a reply. I'm like, oh, this is yours. So this there, is... There's a beep on the device? No, there, there are lights actually. There are multiple devices we use. As of now, we are using a device that will just show lights. Okay. So I have to keep it like this so that I can see from my peripheral that, okay, it blinked. You know, it just blinks. And uh, so that happened. And I'm like, oh, so this is yours. And again, it blinks. And by now, I am at the point where I'm like, you know, I have to do something to establish the communication because it's not going anywhere it's just it's been 45 minutes now the last 15 minutes only i'm getting these two responses so i have to do something and i said you, you know that if uh, if you do not come to talk to me or communicate with me i'm going to take this doll back home with me you know this is mine from now on by this time my crew guy is on the ground coughing and saying that i'm feeling choky here exactly what Pooja shared. I never shared the psychic reading with them because I know they'll get scared. The psychic reading only I knew and I was going to use it for my investigation. He's like, you know, I'm feeling very choky here. So now when it comes to the crew, of course, like I said, those are poor guys. They have no idea what we are dealing with. They unka kaam hai, they have to just record, shoot, audio clear, hai, ye clear hai, and they're done with the job. So when he got affected so badly, I am like, you no, know, this is going somewhere that there's no intention to. So I have to kind of step up, not only from, from the point of how I'm trying to communicate, but also from the energy point of view. Like you give this energy boost to yourself to make yourself look bigger and more powerful. That's what I did. I'm like, you have no freaking right to affect my crew member like you did right now. You want to do something with, you want to affect someone, trying to harm someone, do it with me. So I'm holding that doll and I throw the doll just to disrespect the spirit, which is, Totally not recommended. But I had to do something to move his attention towards me because I got the idea that I'm all protected. I'm all meditative and everything. But these people do not meditate. They do not have that thing to protect themselves. So it's targeting them. And I'm like, you want to do something? Do it with me. And on camera, I'm throwing the doll to a particular corner. And I'm like, karo, cho karna. 
So it's a very, it may look like a like my ego is hurt, but all I'm trying to do is just provoke it. So what we call is, uh, we are trying to trigger it. That's the term. What is the relationship of the spirit with the doll? It's just attached or probably it was its doll or so how it happens is, for example, is why I also mentioned about the Annabelle of India or Annabelle for that matter or other objects that are very popularly said to be haunted is because there are certain kind of energies attached to them. Now that object may not necessarily be theirs, but they're just affected by it. They're just, they just have this affection to, towards the object. And if they like it, they will stay around it. You do what anything with them. And it's like, you know, for example, your mobile phone, your cell phone, it's yours, right? So if someone random comes in and plays with it, you'll be not happy about it. You'll be like, this is mine. What if you send it to another country? Will the spirit follow the object? Yes, it will. It will. There is there is no dimension. There is no time. There is no space in the spiritual world. That's what we, we have got to know. Because uh, there have been times where we have investigated two different places in two different longitude latitudes of the country and the spirits, uh, let's say okay, uh, let's say we investigated this house in Bhubaneswar, then we are going to Rajasthan to investigate one place. That spirit, even before we have entered, knows who we are. And right now we know that they have this community, spirit community, where they also talk about things. So right now we are talking about them. They know that we are talking about them. Yeah. Goosebumps <laughs> and just a little shit in my pants. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so we left the doll as it is and we entered another room and uh, we are discussing what should we do more because by now what is happening is there are sounds happening on the terrace and it completely feels like someone is running, you know, thumpings and all those things and happening and we know it's happening but for some reason we are apprehensive of should we go and check or do we just know that it is a spirit doing because by now I have already triggered it. But I'm like, no, this is, we have to cross check here. How can we just let it to the spirit directly? So I asked one of my crew guys, go and check, no, if there is some, some children, some kid going and running, there could be someone randomly, who knows. And uh, the crew guy, go, uh, uh, guy goes up and he is standing in front of the terrace and he says that, um, sir, uh, I'm seeing the terrace. I'm hearing the sound, but there's no one in front of me. I'm like, okay, you can go down now. It's confirmed with the spirit. So I just, I say to the spirit, what are you doing up? Come down now, we'll have a chat and we'll talk about you. I know what you have been through. Pooja told me about you. Let's have a talk. Let's have a conversation. That's how we can understand each other. And maybe I can help you out. Let's do this. Again, nothing is happening. So I asked the, those things are happening, the constant thumping and all. So we asked the camera guy, just go and see, you know, if you can take some shots and all by the time I understand what is my next step. So this guy is standing right in front of the kitchen, like I mentioned, as you enter and he's taking some shot. Now that guy is, uh, he's right now 39. So back then he must be around what mid thirties or early thirties. And, um, he's taking some shots within five minutes. He starts shouting, mummy, mummy. Now, when a 30, 35 years old guy starts shouting, mommy, mommy, you know, there's something wrong. So we go on and I'll not lie. I've been to a lot of cases. I've investigated a lot of cases, seen things which people haven't seen. And for the first time I saw something and I kind of freaked out, like for two seconds, I'm like, what the hell is this? I saw that guy's leg is bent in and is like being pulled, like someone is pulling him. And he's trying very hard, trying to hold the frame of the door, not trying to be pulled in. And he's like, Sarbaji, there's someone pulling me. I'm like, Faltu. And I'm saying, I'm seeing that. But my first reaction is that's Faltu. You're, you're overreacting or something stuck. Uh, some wire, some invisible wire, some pipe is there. Because a kitchen, there could be anything that's wrong. So other crew member pull him out. And he's like, Sarbaji, there was someone pulling me inside. I'm like, that's impossible. Don't try to scare everyone else right here. We're trying to get a good episode, trying to help out the family. Let's focus on that. My instant reaction is I'll never believe instantly until unless I investigate on it. And I'm like, there's some wire and all. So I go on to see there's not a single wire, single pipeline or anything like that. that could, you know, let his leg bent like that and make us feel or make us see like something is pulling that leg, very particular leg. And when I saw there's nothing and I'm like, you know, if the spirit is manifesting so intensely, there should be something on your leg because I saw it bent. Other crew members saw it bent. You know, it was bent. Let's lift your pants. And we lift his pants. There are five complete fingerprints on his leg. Like it is burnt. Five dark fingerprints on his leg. And by the time the crew is messed up, 
uh, and uh, apart from me, because I'm very excited because what just happened, but I can also understand where they come from. And they were like, you know, I think we should quit the show and we should leave. I'm like, are you guys crazy? We're trying to help a person. You know, I do not care so much about the show than what I care about the client. I have to help out the client. So we all are staying. No one is going anywhere. As all of these things are happening, there's again a loud third. Now, remember that there is not a single light source apart from the torches that we have, which are also not very powerful because they can fall on the lens and create something which can be called paranormal. So we do not use. There's a loud, loud, loud noise of something falling. And it felt like it felt somewhere very close. And I'm like, what is this noise? And I was like, yeah, what is that noise? What is that noise? And they try to figure out, remember that big block of rock that was kept? It's now on the floor. There's no way someone could touch it or push it because we all are engaged in this thing. And there were only four people. Me, the one camera guy, two camera guy, one sound guy. That's it. No one else. And we are locked in. Now, there was something that was trying to make its presence felt so, so bad that it is now affecting the crew. I'm like, no, this is going somewhere else that I do not want. Let's do one thing. Let's go to that one room and sit and just observe what is happening. Because by now, the entire room feels like a tornado. There are things happening everywhere. Cupboards are opening on their own. There are sounds happening up there. Whereas through the doll, apart from that room, every other room is happening something or the other. And everyone is freaked out because something very dangerous just happened to one of the crew guys. I'm like, let's do one thing. Let's shut off all the lights, all the cameras. Let's just keep one night vision camera away from us. All the devices, let's shut them down. Sit in one corner, corner and respectfully, let's try to interact with the spirit. Because see, I may be all triggering and all, you know, whatever I'm trying to be, my crew cannot go through that. And I have to understand that. Otherwise, what kind of leader I am in that team? So I'm like, we will not trigger more, but we'll sit down and we'll try to bring in the spirit to talk to us. We have to contact. And as we're talking, we start the communication with just one device that is close to the night vision camera. We are not holding them anymore. And I start asking the question, are you here because you have been stuck here for the last 50, 60 years as shared by my psychic. Are you the same lady? Yes, I got a reply. So basically I have, to, I can give them command that if it is yes, you can give me two lights. If it is no, you can give me three or four. And I can also interchange just to make sure that it is not coming from some electrical source. Mm. So uh, I'm getting responses and I ask that, you know, I, I know whatever happened to you is very bad, but you also have to understand that these people who are staying uh, on, the, on the ground floor, they have no hands in whatever you want. So you understand that it said yes, but still you want to stay here. It said no, but if no, then are you stuck here? She says, yes. Do you want to leave? Yes. Now, by all these things are happening, if I go on to explain how we were sitting, I'm sitting right in front of the door. Behind me is one of the camera guys, jiske pair mein hua. Unke baju mein is the sound guy. And behind him is another camera guy sitting next to a cupboard. Uh, and as we're communicating, there's a noise coming from the cupboard, you know? And I'm like, where is this noise again coming from? And uh, we open, there is nothing inside the cupboard. Then we close it. And again, we continue with the communication. Communication is going on. And by now the night vision thing has captured this guy so who is sitting next to the cupboard, which is now, you know, partially open because of what we did. He is reacting to something like this. Sorry. And uh, I have no idea what is happening because I'm constantly in the mood of communication, everything. And the communication has been established. I know that the entity is now ready to leave. It's ready to understand that it has to leave the physical world to go to the spiritual world. And it has to be done some way or the other. Now, there are various ways of helping them out. I'll just say what is that but before I go on to that the man who reacted seeing something we have no idea because we are sitting all samne and uh, when we and I, I know I'm being a bit, a bit half hazard right now because you need that context to understand sure. is uh, when we go to the editing table and uh, we uh, the editors are seeing and uh, they are like you know what are you reacting to that guy and he's like no I felt like someone came out of the cupboard something some apparition and we were like, what bullshit? We felt nothing. We saw nothing. Everything was happening right in front of us. Then when we are going frame by frame, quite literally frame by frame, we see this white color, you know, disembodied thing coming out of the cupboard. And in three frames, it's invisible. And that is what this man sees. We have no idea. You know? Do you still have the footage? It's with the TV crew guys. But they did play it on live uh, while the episode aired. And people did saw. 
and there's no way to debunk it no way to debunk it because many would say that it is a reflection coming from outside but we have to understand that what the camera we are using is a night vision camera in night vision cameras the the, the sensors are not similar to that of the normal dslrs or normal video cameras because there's one particular light the night vision camera is using and that is called the infrared uh, leds to see things which are visible in dark no reflection nothing like that and of course you know i will notice if there's a reflection there's nothing like that now cut back to the communication part you know and i i i was in the expectation that considering the things that were happening and everything i'll have to be very very uh, you know uh, powerful and vigilant and uh, persuasive to make that spirit go but you know the only thing that worked to help the spirit i just made her realize that she is dead i just asked her do you know you are dead you do not belong to this place now generally this question will trigger a variety of response sometimes the spirit will be very happy you're like okay i'm dead i'm free i can move on now sometimes the spirit will be like how can you say that i'm dead it's like you know if you call a living person you are dead the reaction will get because they do not know they are dead when uh, i just i just happened to ask this question and i as a crew guy just be ready because this is the final dent that you might face something shayad kuch bhi na ho but ye kuch ho sakta hai जब मैंने बोल वन आई सेट दैट यू नो द यू नो आर यू नो यू आर डेड एंड दैट यू नॉट बिलोंग टू दिस प्लेस सडनली एवरीथिंग फेल्ट यू नो साइलेंट डेड साइलेंट नो रिस्पॉन्स ऑन द डिवाइस द थम्पिंग ऑल स्टॉप एवरीथिंग फेल्ट साइलेंट दर इज नथिंग अपार्ट फ्रॉम द ब्रीदिंग नॉइज इज कमिंग फ्रॉम माई क्रू एवरीथिंग फेल्ट साइलेंट एंड आई हैड अ गट फीलिंग यू नो शी इज गॉन शी इज नॉट देयर एनी मोर बट वी हैड टू यू नो गैदर ऑल द डिवाइस इन ऑल and uh, we went to all the rooms to figure out if we have left anything now remember that doll i threw to that one particular corner it was captured live on camera when i entered the doll was back in its original position none of us went back to that room because they're all were around me because of how shit scared they were the doll was back to its original position and uh, the doll was the reason everything began for me in my communication and that is where it ended because we didn't touch it we didn't uh, carried with us because back then we were not collecting things now we do but uh, yeah and then few weeks later we uh, we kind of you know call back to the client to figure out if things are still happening and you know if more things are needed or not and uh, she was very happy that there's no noise there's no ladies being seen and a new tenant is ready to move in which the place which has been lying abandoned for 30 years someone is trying to move in now what happened to the doll i have no idea i asked the old lady you know do you know who's the doll it if it is one of your grandkids uh, she's like no none of my grandkids they're all boys they don't play with teddy bears they she also happened to call the previous tenants and they were like no we had no small kid uh, so we do not know who's the doll is but uh, i have even no idea where the doll went but considering uh, we uh, kind of helped us spirit or the lady uh, i don't think the doll was possessed anymore so it's mm, like any other non living thing and also to add more to the fact that you know an emf is being radiated from a doll that has no batteries no wire just that cotton thingy synthetic cotton was weird even for me i'm like how is this possible there's nothing physics physics is explaining right now uh, with this doll but why did you feel like this was the scariest case because of just all this physical interaction that also happened uh, a scariest case is because for the first time in my life i saw an inanimate animate object being possessed in a way there is an attachment to it and also that spirits could of course we have done our research and we know to what extent spirits can go but to see it happen right in front of you is a different experience you know like the chat we had when you are standing out in that haunted location and you are like the bridge between the living and the dead you are experiencing two dimensions two frequencies simultaneously and when i saw that it was more than scary it was i think it is very exciting moment in a exciting in a way that it becomes very spooky and all mm. if i'm making any okay. sense no no fair. if you enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe to this channel and make sure you watch more horror clips on TRS clips